All right, friends, I think it is about time for an update on the pond. It has been at a standstill for a very long time as I've been busy with other stuff and just kind of generally distracted. Uh, the reason I'm filming this update today is because I want to talk about negative edge returns or infinity edge returns where the pond, the water level of the pond, rather than using a skimmer or an intake bay, drops over a waterfall into a cistern uh, that captures the water and acts as a, uh, as a skimmer for the pond. It's probably one of the most effective forms of skimming for a pond. And I've been trying to figure out how to build mine effectively and successfully for quite a while now and there's just not very much good information out there there's lots of uh not lots there's a few videos of you know professional contractors who have built them uh there's a guy named john john g adams who has a wonderful and excellent um design video on how to design them uh but almost no one has done uh, any sort of video on how to actually construct them, like the details of construction, which uh, I've found to be kind of challenging to figure out uh, and being kind of an anxious person and wanting to get it right from the start and not have to redo it later, wanting to really know how to do it right. So I'm going to try to really uh, deeply uh, document the process of building this, uh, my, uh, my negative edge uh, pond return. And hopefully, uh, by the time I'm done documenting, I'll be able to take everything that I've videoed here and put it together into a uh, kind of a, a master class of sorts of how I actually built it and how it works. Um, and you can you can be sure that as I go through the documentation process, that uh, I'll probably get some details wrong and have to backtrack and redo things. Uh, but I, I need to just film it along the way so I can kind of show you how it all came together. And by the time it's all done. Hopefully soon, uh, we'll be able to take a look at how it actually performs. So let me turn the camera around and I'll show you exactly what the plan is to do. Uh, and then we'll see in the future if, it, uh, if the plan that I have today matches up with how it actually gets built. All right, so here is what we're looking at. The main pond is over here uh, and it's kind of, uh, you can't see it very well because there's a bunch of liner on this side, right? I've got, you know, rolled and folded back. Um, so it doesn't look quite right, obviously. But uh, this right here where you see these sandbags that I just filled with dirt are the edge of the pond. I use that to set the edge of the pond. So with a negative edge return, uh, the most one of the most important parts is building this waterfall edge here because there's going to be water that falls out of the pond into the cistern. So that's the idea of a, of a negative edge return uh, in the first place. It's like uh, kind of like an infinity edge pool, right? So um, rather than having a skimmer or having an intake bay, is you have just a waterfall at the edge of the pond that falls into a cistern. Uh, and that cistern can be built in a number of ways. Uh, it almost always consists of a pit, which here's my pit, beautiful pit, um, filled with some sort of uh, void space container that gives it structure, uh, often aqua blocks, which I have a few of sitting on some plastic pallets over there. But what I'm going to use, and I have a plan for, uh, to make very, very strong, like an aqua block, but much, much less expensive, are, uh, you can see it by the shed over there, all that blue stuff, those are milk crates, which I bought from a dairy farmer who had pallets and pallets and pallets of them, and where aqua blocks cost something like say almost two dollars a gallon in storage the last time I checked maybe a little bit less if you buy in bulk um, I'm gonna be paying I think once I add in all the extra stuff I have to do to make it as uh, strong like an aqua block in the realm of 30 to 35 cents a gallon rather than you know two uh, two dollars a gallon so quite a lot of savings and those are all gonna get stacked up inside of this pit to provide structure for the, and so the water will all live in here, the water will spill over, and what this will be is effectively a 2,000 gallon um, cistern. It'll hold uh, rainwater, so as the, uh, as the pond fills up with rain in the winter, all the extra rain, rather than the pond level rising, because we have an edge here uh, that will waterfall over, all the water that falls on the pond will fill up this cistern in the winter, 
and for much of the summer I'm hoping uh, it will be able to draw from this without ever having to uh, without ever having to add city water uh, to the pond so the pond will be I'm, I'm hoping it'll be self-sustaining I don't know if 2,000 gallons is enough but that's as much as I could uh, that's as much as I could muster for this project it's gonna end up being just in this pit I think 250 about 250 um, milk crates and so the milk crates are gonna get stacked in here I'll try to share a drawing as well of what I'm thinking about this I've got a few sketched out that I can throw in this video Uh, the milk crates will get stacked up in here. I'll use some drainage pipe. This is 15 inch drainage pipe. Uh, these ones are not long enough, uh, but I'll have you know others like that. It'll get stacked up in you know in a corner here or something that will uh, that will go down to the bottom of the pit and uh, you know cut slots in them so that they can draw water through them. And that's where the pumps will live. The pumps will live in there so that if I ever need to get at the pumps, I can just you know reach my hand down, boop, pull a pump out, and service it if needed and then those pumps will send water to wherever I'm going to send it in the pond. So I'll send it to the jets inside the pond, I'll send it to the, uh, the wetland filter that I'm gonna build up here, and a, another uh, little stream that I'm gonna build that's gonna start under the deck and run into the pond over here. Now, what else do I need to share about this? Yeah, okay, so here's one of the big question marks that was in my head as I was trying to figure this out. Do you do it with one liner? Do you do it with multiple liners? Uh, I could have done this project with one liner. However, I'm not going to be able to now because I bought a really big liner, but I changed my plan so many times that by the time the liner was set, and I can't move the liner anymore because, 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 I've built this big retaining wall uh, inside of the pond. And so the liner is, you know, underneath that wall and this liner is set, can't drag it an inch one way or another. So I had to work with what I got and I don't have enough uh, on this end to use one liner. So you can use a separate liner and you just have to make sure that you've got enough fall from here to there that you can do an overlap so that this, you know, the, the, the liner that lines this hole will come up over this edge and then this one will get folded back over it and then you have enough of an overlap that the water falling off of the waterfall doesn't, you know, uh, wick back up behind that and get lost in the in the soil behind it and I'll be okay in that sense. Now, the other part of this is when you look at videos online um, or on YouTube or wherever and you know, pictures of the negative edges that people build, you kind of see it done a number of ways. Sometimes it just falls into some gravel, like you see gravel along the top. So that's the idea. Uh, usually you'll see like a, a little depression here so that you get the aqua blocks or the, my, in my case, milk crates that get stacked up almost to the top and then it'll get covered with gravel. And then you'll see the water just kind of disappearing into the gravel. And sometimes you'll see uh, a pool of water in front of it and then it's just kind of like the, that little pool is disappearing into the gravel and what's happening is that water is falling down into the cistern below. Uh, the problem that I'm running into, you know, and as somebody who's never built one of these things before, uh, trying to figure out is, okay, so one of the most important parts, and this is what John G. Adams taught me, is that you've got to size your cistern properly to know like the water in motion. So you've got water falling off of your uh, wetland filter into the pond, and then you're going to have you know, up to an inch, maybe even two inches of water uh, coming over the edge here. If the pumps ever go off, you have to know how many gallons of water are in motion at any time falling in here so that this pit is sized properly to capture it all. So that means that there has to be, uh, there has to be excess space in this pit to capture any water that falls when the pumps shut off and all this water comes rushing down you know, into the pit when the pumps are off so they can't pump it back out. Otherwise you get flooding and it'll just flood all over the yard and into the neighbor's yard or whatever. So you gotta have, you have to plan for that. <clears throat> well, I like the look of having, you know, some, some water in this space and it's not just being like a, a landscape area. So that's the other part of it is when you do like a, a rainwater cistern or something, you know, you, you bury it in a foot of soil. You, you know, you wrap the liner over it and you pipe water into it. And then you can actually put dirt and gravel or whatever you want over here and turn this in, back into natural landscaping. And you've just got, you know, thousands of gallons of water sitting a foot below the surface that uh, if you didn't know better, you wouldn't even know was there. Um, 
that's cool but i also want to incorporate some water features into this so what i'm going to do and what i couldn't figure out is okay well if you've got water sitting up here uh if you've got a pool of water sitting at the top well that means that the cistern is full well that looks neat but if the cistern is full and the pumps go off well then you've got your problem right you've got a couple hundred to potentially a couple thousand gallons of water in my case it's going to be a couple of hundred gallons of water flowing back into this pit and it has nowhere to go it has nowhere to be contained within um if i wanted to just make this entire pit part of the uh you know part of the pond i could you know dig this down a little bit deeper and then just have you know six inches to a foot of extra space inside of here so that you know where the you know where the gravel would only come up to maybe uh eight inches below the the edge the edge there and then <clears throat> If the pumps ever shut off there'd be enough extra space in there to capture it but what i actually want to do is have some part of this pit be an extension of the pond you know a kind of stream and the rest of it to be uh to get some landscaping space back to build a fire pit build a little patio around and the um, and the cistern can live underneath it well so how do you do that well my plan here's my plan for how i'm going to do it my plan is I'm going to build those. I'm going to dig this down probably about another foot. So this is going to go down another foot. And then I'm going to put a liner in. I'm going to put a, a separate liner in that comes up over here so that when this liner comes back, it folds over it and you've got that overlap. And then I'm going to put those milk crates in. And then I have a, uh, I haven't decided for sure what the, what the material is going to be. It's probably going to be five quarter uh, PVC or composite decking is going to go over that to, to really stiffen it, uh, to really stiffen the top surface. And then I'm going to put some geofabric, like the stuff, like this underlayment that I have here, is going to go over the top of all of that, except for in one area, wherever I want the water to drop into the cistern from, uh, is where I'm going to put uh, a hole in this membrane. And there's just going to be an opening, maybe here, here, in a corner somewhere. I'm not sure yet. And then I'm going to put another liner. We call that a bib liner. And a bib liner, uh, if you've watched a lot of pond building videos, is a, uh, is a liner that you use to keep water from falling down further. So sometimes when you're building waterfalls, um, rather than like, trying to fill up a big void with gravel and foam it all in, you just put another kind of false liner where you want water to be diverted from and you foam the liner in. And then that makes it a lot easier to get water to go where you want it to. Well, I'm gonna do that again. So we've got the bottom liner, then the blocks, and then the geo membrane covering everything. And then I'm gonna come in with another liner, another liner that's going to create a stream through this and to wherever that, that hole in the, uh, in the membrane is that falls down into the, into the pit and then so that leaves us the top of those blocks will be about a foot will be about a, will be about a foot below the surface and then I'll have you know a stream cut in that's about a, a foot deep cut in wherever wherever it's gonna go and then everything outside of that area will be backfilled with uh, with native soil so native soil will come back over there I can plant grass I can build a patio I can do whatever I want uh, and then water will fall out of the pond over this over this edge. It will come through the bib liner that is, uh, you know, that's my stream, and then fall down to the cistern. And then that way, and I can make that bib liner whatever size and shape I want it to be, and that will allow me to have a water feature in this area while also having space for landscaping, while also having... Uh, put you know void space down below so that if the pumps ever shut off there's enough space in this pit to capture all of the water that will fall over that edge when the pumps can't pump it back out that is the plan and i know that me just describing it and pointing the camera at the pit this whole time is not very um is not super useful to someone who uh like you who's probably on YouTube to learn about this by watching it happen. But this is the very beginning of the, of the journey of actually putting this thing together. So I will video uh, all the different steps that go into actually making this happen so you can see how it actually comes together. And I'm pretty sure I will probably be the first person on YouTube to show how this thing, this kind of thing actually gets built. 
Uh, I wish it were someone else because like I said, I've never done it before. Uh, it would be nice if someone who actually did know what they were doing had some, uh, had some really good tutorial videos out there, but they don't. So I'm gonna do my best to make mine and um, maybe it'll inspire some people who are more talented than me to do theirs. And this can just be the start of a big conversation. All right, we'll see you in the next one.